you are about to witness an actual criminal trial. There are no actors, no scripts, no reenactments. Every second is real. Tonight's case, Florida versus Bobby Lee Robinson, reported by Harold Dow. We have a person who stood up against drugs, and the drug dealers didn't like it because he was hurting their business and had them whacked. That's what this case is all about. My husband was a brave man. His life was taken. It was a threat to the drug dealers, and especially to one person. Hello, man. That's something they got to prove. I'm the loving type. I'm the trusting type. The number one, I know I'm being framed. This is the Super Bowl. This is one of the most interesting murder cases in a long, long time because of the players. The defendant, the victim, his family, the prosecutor, everyone. All right. It's just another murder trial in a city where there are hundreds of murders every year. But even in Miami, where drug violence is almost commonplace, this murder stands out because of the victim, because of the brutality, because of what's at stake. It's been two years, but in the Miami community of West Perrine, they still mourn for Lee Arthur Lawrence, whose battle against crack cost him his life. For two years, the memories of his anti-drug crusade have burned brightly. Mr. Lee Arthur Lawrence, he was some kind of man. Yeah. For two years, wife Sarah and son Lee Arthur Jr. have waited for answers. Greater love hath no man than this, yes, sir. and that a man lay down his life for his friends. Yeah. And with their neighbors, waited for justice. We remember his wish to continue the struggle for the decent drug free community so that the life of Lee Arthur Lawrence Sr. was not taken in vain. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, now the wait is over. It takes a special person to stand up for what he believes. A special person who would chase drug dealers from his store. Alleged drug dealer Bobby Lee Robinson is charged with first degree murder, accused of hiring the hitmen who killed Lee Arthur Lawrence. Proceed with the witness. Thank you. Joseph Rosenbaum is the prosecutor, Gerald Bagley his second in command. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this case, the state will ask that you return a verdict of guilty against this defendant for the execution, assassination, brutal murder of Lee Arthur Lawrence. Lee Grocery closes at 11 o'clock. And as Mr. Lawrence is leaving Lee's Grocery, he's picking up trash outside. Inside the store at that time is Juanita Myers. Ms. Myers, I want to bring your attention to March 20th of 1989. Yes. What happened? This, this guy came out shooting at, Ms., at Mr. Lee, and Mr. Lee fell. And I was screaming. Then just something told me just to lay down. Bay County Police and Fire, is this an emergency? Yes, when he sir. fell, and the guy stood over him and started shooting him from his head to his toes. I just got shot, but I heard a lot of screaming. Also inside the store is the other witness who came to visit Juanita, Bernard Williams. The whole truth and nothing but the truth of you got. I do. He goes outside and checks on his dog and his bike. I walked over here to quiet my dog down. Williams is more than a witness. He, too, was a victim of the Uzi attack on Lee Arthur Lawrence. Picked him up off the leash, turned, walked, and he got hit in the back. Right, slow down. Can you please show the members of the jury where you got shot? That's on your left shoulder on your back? Yes. Bernard Williams recovered from his injuries. Lee Arthur Lawrence Sr. did not. He walked over, and I looked at him, and I said, Art, I said, they've been trying for a long time, a very long time. I said, but they finally got you tonight. And I said it that night. What was it? What did you say? Nobody did this but Bobby Lee. Bobby Robinson is innocent, wholly and entirely innocent of this 
crime, not a shred of evidence in this case against Bobby, not a shred, nothing, zero. But there's even more to this case. But more than the state of Florida against Bobby Lee Robinson. With the help of the prosecution. More than a community battling drugs. Evidence was manufactured. This case pits defense attorney Alan Sovin against prosecutor Joe Rosenbaum. Joe Rosenbaum, bulldog. Alan Sovin, magician. They're longtime adversaries in the courtroom and out. It's like we go and we explain what happened and lay it out. We're night and day, we're black and white, we're just different. He then goes in and messes up the room, like a little kid. Irrelevant, We have to pick up after him objection. to tell the jury what the truth is. This rivalry is about to take a stunning turn. So is the case against Bobby Lee Robinson. All right. Let's kick ass. The defense is about to accuse the victim's own son. Lee, Arthur, Lawrence, Jr executed his father. Lee Arthur Lawrence Jr. ruthlessly, viciously, intentionally hired three young, ruthless boys to murder his father. It's a claim that shocks the courtroom and stuns the victim's family. How would you feel if someone said you had your father killed and you loved him? How would you feel? Revelation or fabrication? The answer when we come back. Course and recess till tomorrow morning. There he is. He's not a celebrity. He's not a millionaire. He takes in the best of life by being smart and thrifty, paying sale prices for his wardrobe, buying only unleaded regular. And I didn't pay a lot for a muffler at Meineke. At Meineke Discount Mufflers, you're not going to pay a lot for a muffler. An important message from Ford Motor Company. For the 11th year in a row, owners of Fords, Mercury's, Lincoln's, and Ford trucks have reported fewer problems on average than owners of any other cars and trucks designed and built in North America. At Ford, quality is job one. How'd you get those flowers in there? Late potpourri, it freshens the air. Where'd you get them herbs and spice? Mountain Heather to Country Garden. Nothing freshens like Glade Potpourri Spray. Spray it, shake it, or pump it. No potpourri is like Glade. Frank and I do everything together. That's good. Why, when I was pregnant with Cody, we even gained weight together. That wasn't good. Then I went on the Ultra Slim Fast plan, and in four weeks, I lost 10 pounds. And Frank lost 15 pounds in six weeks. That was great. We each had a shake for breakfast, another for lunch, and then a sensible dinner. You know, honey, going on the Ultra Slim Fast plan together really is a great idea. Yeah, I'm uh, glad I thought of it. Uh, Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week, we'll take off the weight. You're saying Lee Arthur Sr. killed his own father? No, no, Junior. Lee Arthur, Junior. Defense attorney Alan Sovin opens what he calls the Super Bowl of Trials with a classic dealer. strategy. He's a big drug dealer. He's been arrested four or five times. The best defense? a good offense. Are you essentially just creating a reasonable doubt? Isn't that your job? I, I think that the fact that, that Lee yeah. Jr. is running guns and, and running drugs uh, did not bode well with his father. So he eliminated his father? Yeah, apparently so. The defense lawyer, he is desperate. He's a desperate man. He's desperate like Bob. Lee Jr. isn't in the courtroom for the bombshell. Busy, he says, running the family store. Angry, he says, at the defense charge. You know, just to, to know that my father got taken out like a, like a dog, like a, like a wild wolf. No, he didn't murder his father. Sovin, he's going to eat it so bad in closing. He's going to be bleeding in closing. But while the prosecutors are talking bold, they're acting scared. Checking up on Lee Jr.'s past. Were they, were they violent arguments? No, no, no. Checking in with eyewitnesses from the Lawrence family store. How come the police never took a statement from Lee Jr. Why did the police never ask Lee Jr. where he was the night his father got murdered? All right, the Honorable J. Alfonso, second presiding. Okay, let's proceed. Call the witness. Tremaine, sir. The prosecution begins to make its case against Bobby Lee Robinson. 
It won't be easy. Two guns were used in the murder, but there are no smoking guns. Prosecutors need to convince the jury that Bobby Lee Robinson hired the alleged hitmen. Please state your full name. Tremaine Andre Tiff. Tift saw Robinson with the gunman just before the murder. One of the gunmen then approached Tift with an offer. What did you discuss with Ronnie Boo? Spraying up a pop in his, in his son. An old man and his son. Spraying up, an invitation to murder Lee Arthur Lawrence. After the murder, Tift saw Robinson with two of the hitmen. And what did you see Ronnie Boo and David Ingram with? A pocket full of money. But was that pocket full of money a payoff for murder? Afternoon, Mr. Tift. My name's Barry Wax. I'm one of Alan Sovin's assistant raises the crucial issue for the defense. Reasonable the doubt. Way, you testified that you saw Bobby Lee Robinson go into a home with Ronnie and Rodney, correct? Correct. You couldn't see what was going on in that home, did you? No. And in point of fact, you never saw Bobby Robinson hand Ronnie Johnson any money, did you? No. I have no further questions. These are all reluctant witnesses. You may step down, sir. Thank you. They're afraid of Bobby Lee Robinson. If he's killed before, he's going to kill again if he gets off. No doubt in my mind. Bobby is not no bad person. Robinson's wife, Valerie, is one of his few visitors in jail. There's a side to him, she says, the jury will never see. The homeless and the junkies on the street, he take his old clothes and give them to them. Let me ask you point blank. Did you order the assassination of Lee Arthur Lawrence? No, sir. You didn't do it? No, sir. I'm going to be honest. I know I got to face it. I've been charged with it. I got to face reality. See, ain't no time to break down. I got to stand tall and be a man. If you feel he's been framed, why him? Why not somebody else? That's the question I want to ask. Why Bobby? Why frame Bobby? Bobby Lee ever sell drugs? Listen, Bobby So $5 pieces was nothing. And the man don't have nothing. Not nothing. Take your jacket off. Not even, he says, a second suit for court. 39. Well, oh, that's actually the wrong, up here. If I'm a big time drug dealer. Here, step on this. No, Barry. You yeah, yeah, no, he's got Barry, Barry. I wouldn't have to have my sister and my mama to scuff up a couple of dollars to get me a suit. You won't even need to have it tailored. <laughs> New clothes for Bobby Lee Robinson. Where are you staying now? I'm in prison now. And a new tactic for the prosecutors. Do you know someone by the name of Bobby Lee Robinson? Yes. Please point him out and describe what he's wearing. A witness, he doesn't want his face revealed, shared a jail cell with Robinson. Did there come a time in which you spoke with the defendant? Yes. A jailhouse confession. I walked over and he said, uh, yeah, I paid them niggas to kill Bozo. Yes, I paid them niggas to kill Bozo. All right. Who do you know as Bozo? Lee Arthur Lawrence, senior. If the jury believes him, it's devastating for Robinson. The defense comes out swinging. Did you ever threaten to kill your girlfriend and hit her over the head with a board? Objection, Judge. Sustained. You're sitting in jail, and you're looking at some serious time. Yes? Yes. Now, you don't think that you were placed there by the state attorney or the police to make up a confession? No. You're not saying that, are you? No. No. And we shouldn't think that, should we? Well, it's, it's up to you, but I said no. One of his styles is to mislead the jury. You say that Bobby confessed to you. Right. Six days later, you were released from jail. You still were on probation, weren't you? Terminate. Oh, they terminated probation too? What a deal. It's a picture of a desperate prosecution making deals left and right. You screwed up again, didn't you? You got arrested on June 6th. Can't remember. Well, if I had that many felonies, I'd have trouble too. Judge, I have to object and I move to strike. I withdraw the statement. Okay. Try not to make them in the first place. I, it just came out. I know. That was the best course you ever did, Alan. Okay. Let Barry... Whenever you have a jailhouse confession, your heart is in your throat. You don't know what the jury will believe. Inmates can be credible witnesses? Yes. Yeah, it's not done in a church. It's not done in a board of directors meeting. It's done in the jail. And the jury knows this. But what the jury doesn't know... Bobby, would you please get me a warm body? How the defense is struggling with its I need, case. I need you to find a 
witnesses, people, names and addresses who will come to court and testify Lee Jr. sells drugs. Still nothing on Lee Jr. And you merely have to pull the trigger. For their part, the prosecutors must tie Robinson to the murder weapons. Enter a star witness, a firearms expert. Mr. Carr, does the Uzi 9mm pistol, when it leaves the factory, have serial numbers? Yes, it does. The serial number on the Uzi has been filed down. What happened once you did the acid technique to raise the serial number? Yes, after applying the acid, a, a series of numbers came up, um, 13615. But who owns the Uzi? The prosecution moves in for the kill. And what do you do for a living? I'm a bookkeeper and a custodian of records at National Gun Store. Okay, can you please tell us the name of the purchaser of the Uzi, serial number of UP13615? Um, Irby Valerie, uh, middle initial A. Valerie Irby Robinson. Bobby Robinson's wife bought the murder weapon. Why an Uzi? That's a kind of a dangerous weapon, isn't it? Did you feel that your life was threatened, or did no, you, I didn't feel, were you I afraid? Just, I don't feel that need to have them. I love guns. You do? Yeah, I love guns. You may step down, ma'am. Thank you for coming down. Your Honor, uh, members of the jury, at this point, the state of Florida will be resting its case in chief. The court will be in recess till 2 o'clock. Please remain in the courtroom till the jury leaves. The state rests, but there will be no rest for Alan Sovin. He must still make his case, must still convince the jury, and time is running out. Everyone here feels he's guilty. But he's not guilty because it's got to be more than feel. I only have to leave with the jury some reasonable doubt. See ya. And if they have some doubt, Bobby walks. Will he walk? The verdict next. <laughs> Bugs, hungry? Come on, bugs live to eat. With raid bug baits, ants and roaches eat to die. Scuff it up, guys. <laughs> Let's do lunch. <laughs> Just put them wherever you see bugs. Raid baits kill continuously for months. Raid! Must have been something they ate. New raid roach bait and raid ant bait. There's no better way to kill bugs dead. Now at Little Caesars, you can get Picnic Picnic. Two medium pizzas, two orders of crazy bread, and two servings of Coke Classic, all for only $7.98. It's Picnic Picnic. Two pizzas, two crazy breads, two soft drinks, all that food for only $7.98. When it rains, it pours. Picnic Picnic, only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. Our dentist gave us a reason to switch toothpaste. Baking soda. He recommended it for healthier teeth and gums. Two out of three dentists recommend baking soda for healthier teeth and gums. And only one major toothpaste has it. Arm & Hammer Dental Care, the baking soda toothpaste with fluoride. It leaves your whole mouth feeling clean. So maybe you should switch to Arm & Hammer Dental Care, too. I mean, after all, it's got baking soda, recommended by two out of three dentists, and no other major toothpaste has it. And try the fresh mint taste of Arm & Hammer Dental Care Gel. If you or someone you loved were raped, would you want the world to know about it? Private or public? Whose side are you on? With Charles Kuralt, next. Okay, I'm going to say a word and you say the first thing that comes to your mind. Ready? Okay, shoot. Husband. Wife. South. Football. Sophisticated. Comedy. Small town. Big laughs. Sex. Bigger laughs. Bigger laughs? The show is Evening Shade. The look is CBS. Organizations providing free services to people with AIDS are desperately in need of volunteers. Is there something you can do to lend a hand? It's closing argument day, and defense attorney Alan Sovin has his work cut out for him. Be seated. His entire case rests on reasonable doubt. He must convince the jury that Bobby Lee Robinson isn't a murderer, and that his defense isn't a sham. Are you ready to start your final argument? Yes. State ready? Yeah, Judge. The defense hasn't found a single witness to support its charge that Lee Arthur Lawrence was murdered by his son. Good afternoon. 
In fact, the defense is closing without calling any witnesses, not even Bobby Lee Robinson. In the beginning of this trial, I shocked you when I told you that Lee Arthur Lawrence Jr. murdered his father, that he had his father executed. It shocked you, and it got you to open your mind. But most importantly, it got you to question the state's case. It's a defense of smoke and mirrors. There's not one microscopic speck of evidence that Junior was involved. Not one. If the defendant didn't hire these three guys, Mr. Lawrence would still be alive today. The state would like you to make this giant circumstantial leap of faith. This isn't by chance. It's by plan, his plan. We who seek the truth labor here for justice. You know what they promised you in opening. You know what they've done throughout the trial. There's only one verdict you can come to in this case, and that's guilty. Thank you. You may retire to deliberate. If you could say something to that jury, your life is in their hands, Bobby. If you could say something to them, what would you say? I really wouldn't know what to say if they convict me. What's to say? Oh, thank I, you know, just like I say, man, I know I'm innocent. What's to say? Just, just don't do what to say. We believe that he's guilty of the murder, and therefore, he deserves to be put off the street and punished for the crime. I'm sorry for crying, babe. It's okay, Bobby. What um, is at stake for the prosecution? What's at stake for the state? Satisfaction, for, really, for the victim's family, okay, and hopefully the people of West Parai, so they don't have to live in fear and terror of Bobby Lee Robinson anymore. Bobby, how you doing? I'm all right, bud. It takes about six hours for the jury to reach its decision. Good luck. This is it. Moment of truth. Mr. Foreman, I've been advised that the jury has reached the verdict. Is that correct, sir? Yes, it is, General. We'll hand the verdict forms to the bailiff. We, the jury at Miami Dade County, Florida, find the defendant, Bobby Lee Robinson, guilty of first degree murder. So say we all. Jury will be polled, Ms. Clerk. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Williams. Yes. Valdez. Yes. Harbuck. Yes. We can't win them all. We gave it our best shots. Okay. Anderson. Yes. When they gave Robert the verdict, yes. I just there sitting Nathan Henry. I just yes. said within myself, Pauline. thank God. It's over with. All right. State ready? But it isn't over. Fence? Yes, sir. Jurors must now decide whether to recommend life in prison or the electric chair for Bobby Lee Robinson. His mother takes the stand to plead for mercy. Tell me, what kind of boy was Bobby like? Bobby Lee wasn't no bad kid. And I never would believe here on earth that Bobby killed Mr. Lee. Somebody give me some just about my children. And I wish you jurors was to listen this evening. Bobby is not a bad boy. What is the proper punishment for the execution death of Lee Arthur Lawrence? The prosecution says there's only one answer to that question. A recommendation of the death penalty. This is human life. But the defense urges the jurors to take a closer look. He's right here. You turn him around. He's a human being. He's got a back. He's not a photograph. He's not one-dimensional. You turn him around and you see that he's there. Should this human being live or should this human being die? This is the toughest decision you're ever going to make in your life. The jury has reached this recommendation. For the rest of your lives, you're going to remember this case. You be sure that you can live with the decision that you make. Mr. Foreman, the jury has reached this recommendation, sir? Correct. 
A majority of the jury, by a vote of 10 to 2, advise and recommend to the court that it impose the death penalty upon Bobby Lee Robinson. You think justice was served? Of course justice was served. And it also made history. Most of the time, when it's black on black, it doesn't mean anything. But with this, it was black on black. And he's going to be punished for it. So your husband made a sacrifice? Yes. Gave his life. So that we can live drug-free. Girls and boys, if they want to play outside, they can. We're going to get our community back. And hey, it's going to work. It's going to work. A final note after this. You know it makes me want to... Shout Stick lets you pre-treat tough stains today. Throw my hands back and Shout them out next wash day. Kick my feet out and Shout Stick starts working right away. It saturates tough stains, penetrates clean through to keep stains from setting in till you're ready to wash them out. You know it makes me want to shout. Come on now. Shout. Want a tough stain out? Shout. Shout it out. Shout. So you claim you were getting your oil changed at your GM dealership. That's right. And it took an hour and a half. At least. Really? This receipt says that it took less than 29 minutes. Order! Mr. Goodwrench, Quick Lube Plus. Try it for a change. We can't win if you can't stop Ricky Henderson. When something on your mind... This could get ugly. ...or something you eat... Look at that jump. ...gives you acid indigestion, it's time for Extra Strength Rolaid. Fast, 1,000 milligrams strong. Now that spells relief. Every Sunday, around twilight, America gets so quiet, you can actually hear the sound of a single clock ticking. The time is Sunday night. The look is CBS. Shortly after the verdict, Judge Alfonso Seppe was named in a federal bribery investigation unrelated to the case. The DA says it will not affect Robinson's conviction. On the next verdict, he lived the good life in Miami as an expert on the insanity defense. Now he's the defendant. Did his young girlfriend make him crazy enough to plan a murder? If you or someone you love were raped, would you want the world to know about it? Private or public, whose side are you on? With Charles Kuralt, next on CBS. Verdict, a production of CBS News. For a transcript of Verdict, send $5 to Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. And to purchase a VHS cassette of tonight's broadcast, call 1-800-338-4847. I'm Charles Kuralt. With students of many cultures, should schools teach only one? An educational challenge this Sunday morning. This is CBS. How long has he been in there? I don't know, six, maybe seven days. Sir? Uh, his name is Danny. Danny, this is the fire department. Yeah. Come out of that bathroom. Yeah. Not until the Honda Summer Dealathon is over. Honda's having a summer dealathon? You mean I can get a good deal on an Accord wagon with fuel injection and driver's side airbag? Danny, come out now, or I'm calling a policeman. Great. And what'll he buy? A prelude? We know how hard you work We'll work that hard for you We believe in putting people first In everything we do Every time we fly Every mile of sky Everything we do
A big blow to the reputed Godfather. Gotti loses his legal eagle at 11. I wanted to die. I just wanted to just throw my hands up and just say, I'm just going to forget about this world. I'm this woman gonna... says she was violated twice, first by the man who raped her, and then by the newspaper that named her. There was a gun. He held it to my head. She was raped too, but she wants you to know her name and every rape victim's name. Discretion or disclosure? You decide. Good evening, I'm Charles Carroll. Tonight we're going to take sides, both sides, in an emotional debate. It's a debate about rape and naming names.